Thank you, Professor Zuka. I will uh, move to the, our next speaker. He is uh, a dear friend and a colleague, Dr. Ahmed Absi. He's a consultant uh, uh, and a section head, uh, the section head of adult hematology and uh, bone marrow transplant in Princess Noura Oncology Center, King Abdelaziz Medical City, Jeddah. He's an assistant professor of hematology oncology in King Saud bin Abdelaziz University for Health Sciences in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. I will leave you with the talk of Dr. Absi. My name is Ahmed Absi. I'm the Hematology Bone Marrow Transplantation Section Head from Princess Noor Oncology Center in King Abdelaziz Medical City, Jeddah. Uh, I would like to thank, to thank the organizing committee for this opportunity to present two of the abstracts presented in the recent ICML uh, uh, conference. My first abstract was titled Early Pit uh, Scan Response Adapted Treatment and Localized Diffuse Large V-Cell Lymphoma. Age adjusted IPI of zero, results of a phase three uh, uh, LYSA LNH09 B trial. Uh, um, as we all know, that early stage diffuse large B cell lymphoma therapy was uh, dictated by several trials, uh, some of which were phase two and some of which were phase three. Worth noting here, the, uh, uh, the SWAG0014, which was almost uh, the first study that uh, innovated the three cycles of RCHOP, followed by involved feed radiation therapy. It was a phase two trial, which carried an excellent progression free survival and overall survival for patients with early stage and low IPI score. Uh, other studies that are worth mentioning, including the FLYER trial, which was a phase three RCHOP for six cycles versus RCHOP for four, uh, plus two extra Rs, so comparing six versus four, and uh, patients less than 60 years old, age-adjusted IPI of zero, and non-bulky disease. This was uh, an equivalent both arms. Uh, also, the LISA uh, German trial, which was uh, published in Blood 2018, it was a two-by-two two design, PET-guided therapy of four to six cycles of RCHOP plus minus radiation. Again, it included patients with early stage uh, uh, disease, non-bulky, and it shows equivalency in five-year event-free survival of 89 versus 92 and overall survival. Uh, the, uh, so this, these trials all uh, set the stage for this current analysis. So the background is that RCHOP21 is the standard treatment for diffuse large B cell lymphoma patients based on previous studies. Six cycles without radiation is the reference. Uh, in the 2019 FLYER trial, four cycles of RCHOP21 could be as effective as six cycles in the younger population. And in uh, early PET scan, uh, 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 directed therapy is effective to drive treatment for patients with diffuse B cell lymphoma and age-adjusted IPI score of uh, more one or more. So the aim of this study is to ask one question. Are four cycles of RCHOP non-inferior to six cycles in limited stage CD20 positive diffuse large B cell lymphoma and age-adjusted IPI score of zero? Uh, it was a randomized phase three trial uh, conducted mainly in France and Belgium for patients both young and elderly. Uh, this uh, was uh, comparing both arms, standard arm, which was basically six cycles of, uh, of uh, RCHOP for patients with early stage disease, uh, if as long as they're PET negative after cycle four. But the experimental arm, which was PET directed after two cycles, so patients who are PET negative after two cycles would get more two more cycles only, so a total of four cycles. And patients who are uh, uh, PET positive after two cycles uh, will uh, get uh, two more, uh, four more cycles of RCHOP as long as they are PET negative after cycle four. So uh, uh, it included patients again uh, with the age adjusted IPI score of zero and limited stage uh, disease. Uh, the primary endpoint was three year of progression free survival, secondary endpoint was uh, overall survival and. Uh, other uh, response rate. It included uh, almost 650 patients. It opened in 2010 and the study closed in May 2020. And the uh, median follow up was five years. The, uh, 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 this is the uh, two arms of the study. 
uh, standard arm enrolled almost 331 patients, experimental arm 319 patients, and uh, it was well balanced between young and older patients, well balanced between gender, majority were males, uh, very few bulky disease, the majority non-bulky disease, and almost all stage 1 and 2, uh, but there were almost half of the patients having extra nodal disease at the time of uh, randomization. This is the extra nodal disease included in this trial. It included everything, with the uh, majority of being in the head and neck area, uh, mostly tonsils. Uh, so we come to the trial, uh, to the results. Progression-free survival and tension to treat. There was no difference at the three years uh, between experimental arm event progression-free survival and the standard arm progression-free survival, both of which were almost 90% plus. Uh, the uh, pair protocol, again, uh, there was no difference between both arms. How about overall survival? There was no difference between both arms. Uh, how about the progression-free survival by age? There was no difference in patients less than 60, but in patients more than 60, there was uh, favoring patients on the experimental arm, the patients receiving less chemotherapy, uh, with uh, inferior uh, progression-free survival of the standard arm at 80. 6.3%. How about uh, PET uh, results? So PET was negative, achieved PET negativity and achieved in more than 80% after two cycles and almost 90% by four cycles. How about PET negativity uh, results after two and four cycles? For patients who are PET negative after two and uh, four, uh, there was no difference between both experimental and, and, and standard arm. How about patients who are PET negative after two, but became, uh, so, uh, sorry, PET positive after two, but became PET negative after four? Again, there was no difference between both arms. How about patients who are both PET negative, uh, PET positive after two and after four? Uh, so they, who are still PET positive after four? Obviously, they did inferior anyway, but uh, there was a favoring of the experimental arm in that. Uh, 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 trial probably only because of those patients selected earlier uh, to be off the protocol. Progression free survival uh, if you uh, pull the whole population together, patients who are uh, PET uh, negative after two uh, was 94%, patients who are PET uh, positive after two but negative after four was 88.7%. And patients who are PET positive after four was inferior at 67.6%. Toxicities were more in the standard arm, obviously because patients are receiving more chemotherapy, mostly in both hematological toxicities, GI toxicity, and peripheral uh, neuropathy. Uh, how about deaths due to toxicities? Uh, there were almost none. There was only one death in the standard arm that was there to toxicity, but this occurred in patients above 60 years old in the standard and experimental arm, but mostly in the standard arm because of concurrent illnesses. And why is that? Uh, I don't uh, know, but it's probably uh, uh, explained that those patients uh, received more chemotherapy and they have more comor comorbidities. How about relapses uh, was uh, in the standard and experimental arm, uh, the site of relapse was the initial site, mostly in the experimental arm. Uh, but the new sites was uh, uh, balanced between both arms. And how about the time of relapse? We note that uh, there were relapses noted almost up to seven years to almost 10, ten years after initial therapy. So the conclusions, this study demonstrates an inferiority of the four cycles of RCHOP versus six cycles of RCHOP for early good responders, confirming that RCHOP could be the new standard of care of the large majority of limited stage diffuse large B cell lymphoma patients regardless of age. Occurrence of late relapses shows the need of long-term follow-up for all patients, even if outcomes are very good in this population. My, this, my second abstract was called relapses in the interim PET negative limited stage Hodgkin lymphoma patients receiving ABV, ABVD with or without radiotherapy. Analysis of the, e, uh, of the H10 and rapid UK trial. Uh, 
So what was the H10 trial? We all know that trial. It was published in the JCO of 2017. Let's remind ourselves about the H10 trial. It was intended for patients with early stage disease, both favorable and unfavorable. So for the favorable, they would get the standard arm of three cycles of ABVD plus radiation and the experimental arm of four cycles of ABVD as long as they are PIT negative after two cycles. In the H10 unfavorable, uh, they would get a total of four cycles of ABVD plus involved feed radiation therapy. And in the experimental, they will get uh, six cycles of ABVD if they are PIT negative after uh, 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 two cycles. This is the uh, unfavorable criteria. It's the standard EORTC criteria. And uh, the other arm of escalated BUCOP is out of interest. The results of the H10 trial showed that patients with favorable had uh, a better outcome if they received uh, the combined chemo radiation therapy arm from progression free survival uh, point of view. And in the unfavorable, there are no difference between both arms. How about the rapid? The rapid was randomized in trumpet negative uh, patients. So after three cycles, if they are PET negative, they would get more further therapy. If they are uh, PET positive, the, uh, if they are PET negative, they were randomized between no further therapy versus 30 grays involved feed radiation therapy. In the rapid trial, there was uh, no difference uh, in intention to treat analysis between both arms. Uh, between radiotherapy and no further treatment, but PP analysis showed that, that patients receiving radiotherapy had uh, better progression-free survival with a hazard ratio of 2.36 and P value of 0 0.02. So what uh, actually explains the difference of outcome between both arms? Well, first of all, uh, the things related to patients as well as therapies. H10 patients included patients with bulky mediastinum and or B symptoms included versus rapid patients with bulky mediastinum or B symptoms were excluded. Interim PET performed after two ABVD cycles in the H10, but uh, rapid interim PET was performed after three ABVD cycles. Interim PET negative patients received three to six cycles of ABVD versus in the rapid, the interim PET negative patients received only three cycles of ABVD. And for PIT uh, results, uh, IHP criteria was uh, the reference in the H10, but the vial was in the rapid. And the radiation arm in the H10 was 30 grays plus boost. In the rapid, there was only 30 grays involved feed, not involved node without boost. Uh, the f additional findings also there were different in the H10. Omitting RT showed an increase in early relapses, but not late, and mostly occurring in initially involved areas. And there was in the analysis showing male uh, gender plus stage two disease are adverse prognostic factors. In the rapid, the only adverse prognostic factor was the maximal tumor diameter. There was no mentioning about uh, early versus late and no mention about uh, the uh, initially involved versus others in the rapid. So to validate, they actually lumped all patients together. This is the whole group of both H10 and rapid and favorable and unfavorable, both arms. So let's look at the results and the, how about the time of relapses for all patients and the H10 uh, patients early relapses was majority in the chemotherapy arm alone. Late relapses was well balanced between both. How about rapid? Same thing. Early relapses was majority seen in chemotherapy arm alone. So early relapses was majority in the chemo alone uh, arm. How about time of relapse? Uh, time of relapse, uh, again, uh, uh, in the favorable, if you only look at the favorable, sorry, uh, again, uh, both uh, uh, in the early relapses, uh, as well as the late, because there were almost no relapses in the chemo and radiation and the H10 arm. And similar idea was in the rapid, although there were more relapses seen in the late relapses in the radiation arm. Uh, in how about uh, the site of relapses for all patients? In the H10, there was the majority of relapses in the chemotherapy arm was in the initially involved. In the rapid, again, uh, uh, the majority of in, uh, relapses in the chemotherapy was the initially involved, although uh, uh, 
the chemotherapy alone arm in the rapid was for all relapses both initially involved and initially involved was more in the chemotherapy arm how about site of relapses favorable uh, group if you look only at the favorable group for the site of relapses you find uh, again in the h10 what uh, was in the initial involved and in the rapid uh, was also in the initially involved in the chemotherapy arm but uh, both initially involved and uninvolved was again was uh, more seen in the initially involved how about uh, gender uh, well there was inferiority for males with the h10 uh, but uh, no gender uh, 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 significance in the rapid. Uh, so in the H10, uh, the female gender was associated with a hazard ratio of 0 0.42, but in the rapid it was uh, non-significant. Lumping both together, there was still inferiority of the males with the uh, females associated with a hazard ratio of 0 0.49. How about the stage? Uh, patients with stage 2 had an inferior outcome in the H10 but that was not seen in the rapid again with a hazard ratio of stage 2 of 2.26 in the H10 and uh, non-significant in the rapid lumping both together it was also non-significant uh, although uh, mildly above D1 so in conclusions in patients with limited stage Hodgkin lymphoma who are interim fed negative after ABVD Omitting radiotherapy results in what? Number one, it results in an increase in less than two years relapses, but not in late relapses, mostly including initially involved areas. They were unable to prove the negative prognostic impact of uh, male uh, gender and stage two disease noted in the H10 in the group of patients enrolled in the rapid trial, although the direction of the effect of gender was similar in both uh, studies. Thank you very much, and that would end my presentation. Thank you.